So for the next part, let's go ahead and see if we have something on this thumb drive. That's an eight gig. It plugs in right here on the front. We're gonna click on print. And sure enough, we do have some files there. Let's see, under model, we do have the usual Buddha here. So I guess we'll start with that. To start printing, we're gonna click on it. But before that, we need to go ahead and load some filament in. So let's go to prepare. And we can use the extruder here. Or for this here, it's really simple as we have direct drive. I'm gonna go ahead and raise the Z here. 10 millimeters, maybe 20 here, so we can see a little better. So let's go ahead and use this Elegoo Gray PLA. The machine doesn't come with some cutters, but it's probably a good idea to have some, as you can cut the filament on an angle, so it's much easier to feed through. So going to the top here, we're gonna slide it on the spool holder, go through our filament detector, and then down to the direct drive extruder. And so we got a release arm here that we're gonna just push on and then push our filament through. And we can actually push it down ourselves and we'll see it purging on the bottom. Or if you want to, you can go here to the screen and click on load and it's going to purge this amount through the nozzle, as you guys can see there. So yeah, either way works. I find it easier just to do it myself. We are done purging. So let's just move this little blob. Now we can go back to print models. We'll go to the little Buddha here, click on it. A preview of what it looks like and it's gonna take 40 minutes pretty quick confirm and it starts so it looks like it's actually taking some measurements on this side which is quite interesting all right so it looks like we purged there was something stuck underneath I was trying to get it out but okay it fell off it's on its own and yeah it's printing and looks like our offset is pretty much perfect what I can tell which is great. Fortunately, this wire here is a little long and it's saggy. Maybe I need to shorten that up, but. So looking at the screen, this is what we see when we're printing. We got settings, pause, stop, LED, the preview of the model, the percent it's done, 39 minutes left, the coordinates, how long it's been since we started, one minute, the nozzle temperature, the bed temperature's over here, this is the Z axis, the speed, the fan speed, the printer speed, and then the flow rate down here. So I can hear some fans coming on. And actually we got the back one here, the large one is on also. What I'm noticing right away, it's much quieter than normal, which is pretty cool. And there's a ton of air coming right here. All right, so let's go ahead and click on settings. So here we can control the nozzle temperature and the bed temperature. Here we can control the speed, the flow, the fan, and under adjustments, we can do the Z axis offset on the fly. And also we can turn on our detector on and off, the adaptive speed mode, we control our LEDs here also. And yeah, those are the main things that we can do in the settings. If we go back and click on LED, here we can turn on and off the main light or the little small one on the bottom. So yeah, pretty logical and obviously stop and pause does exactly what it says. So yeah, I really like the Elegoo layout here. Very easy to use considering this is a clipper software. So right off the bat, we are 100% on the fans. Well, actually no, 80% on the fans. And I have to say it's not loud at all considering what I was expecting as the older printers were a lot louder than this, especially with this external auxiliary fan. And by the way, if you do click on the fan here, you can control it to be faster or slower. So this is gonna take it to 100%. And then we got normal and silent should be around 50 or so. So yeah, you can tone it down here and still have good amount of air instead of turning it off here manually, which we do have an on and off button and becomes very quiet. But we do need that help to cool things off, especially if we're gonna do quick printing like we are kind of here. Very flawless so far, everything is working, except for one thing that I totally forgot is we forgot to do the input shaping. So after this print is done, we'll actually do that and maybe we'll print it again and see if there's any difference. All right, and so our little Buddha is done and yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's see if it pops off. And look at that, easy peasy. And the berm came off really easy too. So let's take a closer look. Um, the bottom here looks pretty good. It does appear that we need to go down just a little bit on the offset, we're a little high. But yeah, it looks really nice. Overall, since we didn't slice this, I'm not too sure about the settings, but it looks like a 0.2 maybe. And it did only take 40 minutes, or actually a little less, 39. And overall looks quite clean. A little bit of stringing here and there, but not bad. And even the top of the head looks pretty good. So yeah, not too bad here for the start. I don't see too much vibrations in the print. There's a little bit something going on right there. 
but maybe we should. And here we can see it took 39 minutes. So you can print again if you want to print the same model. We're gonna click return. We'll go to settings, advanced settings, input shaper. And here it looks like they're separate, X and Y. So let's do the X first, start detection. And it's gonna do its thing. So it looked like we had maybe some kind of error as the clipper screen came up. I guess let's restart. And I'm going to try the Y this time around. See what happens. Since there's no end stops on the X and Y, it kind of hits a pretty hard hit as the end stop just buds against the end. All right, this time it worked, and the Y is going back and forth, and it's shaking the whole table. So that's good. Not sure exactly what happened to the X. I guess we'll try it again here in a second once the Y is done. And you want to leave your printer alone when it's doing this as it's calibrating its vibrations. All right, so here we have a check mark saying we are good and it's done. Click return. Let's try the X again. Hopefully it'll work this time. All right, so it's actually working this time. And we can kind of see the whole heads moving back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and let it finish do that. And then I'm going to print another little Buddha here, the same kind exactly, in the same file. And we'll see how it turns out and if there's any difference between them. Alright, so now we have two of these little Buddhas and you guys can probably tell just by looking at them there that the new one is definitely better, which is pretty cool. So the input shaping definitely works and is doing something. Check it out. So this is the new one here, this one. It looks so much cleaner. So yeah, there you go. Let's see here in the back. Oh yeah, much cleaner back. Look at that. There's no warping or anything weird there. But on this one, there's some warping there. And the input shaping for the X and Y seem to work perfect. So yeah, don't forget to do that for this printer as it makes a huge difference.